Welcome to this second week of July. That would be July 14th. Stories for the, uh, the previous two weeks. I'm going to be doing the TDD reports for a while. Twice a month. It seems to be a good pace with the amount of science uh, news that is coming in. I think about every two weeks approximately. So it'll be like the second week of the month and the fourth week of the month. So this is the second week of the reports for the second week of July. And first up. This is from Ars Technica. Amazon will publish toy catalog this holiday to fill Toys R Us void. I, probably most everybody that's watching this knows, and if you, especially if you have one in your area, the Toys R Us stores, they're pretty much gone. I think it was like a week and a half ago the last one closed. We had one in our area up until about three years ago, and then it closed down. They eventually even knocked the building down, and now it's a fitness center. But uh, Amazon is going to put out a catalog that's somewhat like the 100-page catalog, the Toys R Us, the dream catalog for the kids. So uh, it says here, Amazon's move into retail meat space is largely hinge, hinged around opening or acquiring brick-and-mortar stores. But this holiday, the online retailer will reportedly try something different, printed catalogs, and a massive holiday-themed catalog depicting entirely toys to conveniently fill the void left behind by the recently shuttered Toys R Us chain in the United States. Um, Bloomberg reports uh, a little bit about it here and they said they don't know if it's going to actually be a total big 100 page catalog like the uh, Toys R Us catalog but uh, for everybody that's done any kind of shopping I guess if you've shopped at Amazon uh, not just Prime members you're going to receive this catalog and also anybody that goes into Whole Foods stores you'll be able to get a copy of this catalog too so something nice for the kids I think they always to me, that always made Christmas fun when you'd have a catalog you could look through and you could circle toys that you wanted and stuff like that. Um, not kind, of, not quite the same, at least to me, showing pictures on the internet. But um, who knows what's a what's the current thing with kids and, and what they enjoy. So um, next up from Space.com, Opp Opportunity Mars rover still silent beneath raging dust storm. Yeah, this dust storm started about two and a half weeks ago, I think, and uh, they said originally it was just going to be a localized dust storm. Well, it's covering the entire planet and this report right here is from uh, July 4th but I looked at a recent update as of two days ago and they said now it looks like this storm actually is going to last probably until fall where the InSight uh, is going to come and land too. They have the next InSight rover that's going to land but they said that won't be a big problem because they think by fall the dust storm is going to be kind of a, be abating but um, the storm began on May 30. Well, it's actually even longer. They, they, according to them, it began on May 30 and grew to encircle the entire planet a few weeks later with so much dust in the air. The solar-powered Opportunity hasn't been able to recharge its batteries. So it's basically just in survivor mode right now. I guess it restarts itself every few hours or so and checks to see if the temperature's right or not. And then if not, it shuts itself back down. So they haven't heard from it in quite a while. But this is not unusual, too. They've had other landers land uh, just before or just in the middle of dust storms and stuff like that so they don't think it's going to be a big deal and they think the uh, dust and stuff like that that's actually covering the opportunity might actually um, trap a little bit more heat a little bit closer to the planet so um, and um, as usual the links to all these articles will be down below in the uh, uh, description in the description box so you can click on those links and check out those articles and finally, from Popular Science, Disney is turning to robots to pull off dangerous aerial feats. Um, what they're going to do is they're going to get the uh, robots to actually replace stuntmen and a lot of uh, stunts that are too dangerous for humans or, you know, where people are likely to get hurt really bad or even stunts that are maybe pretty much impossible for humans to do. So it says they're first revealed in May, Stickman, which is one of their stunt uh, robots, was an early version of a fearless robotic performer, while the newest artificial acrobatic figure that Disney has shown off in this category is called Stuntronics and besides this article I'm going to put a video from YouTube showing the uh, this um, article I'm showing you right now shows you Stickman in a video down below but to get a better view of it I've included another video just below and it'll be labeled so watch that one that one's even a little bit better than uh, what they show here but this tells a little bit about it and it says they're building flying machines like these for a couple of reasons first these robots can achieve feats that would be too difficult or dangerous for a human to do What's more, machines can perform over and over without getting tired. Yeah, less mistakes. And if a mistake should happen or malfunction, you know, you're just picking up the pieces and fixing a robot. You're not trying to put together a human being or um, worse come to worse having them uh, die or get hurt really seriously. What's more, machines can perform over and over without getting tired. That's a good reason for a company to use robotics. For example, at a General Motors foundry in Michigan, a large robot pours engine blocks 
out of burning hot liquid aluminum. Yeah, there's uh, pretty much any assembly line. I, I don't see assembly lines anymore, at least any documentaries that I've seen that are not full of robots. In fact, it's probably something like 3 to 1, 4 to 1, maybe even 10 to 1. You see robots on these car assembly lines more than you do uh, human beings. So, yeah, what you may see in the future may be just a dressed up robot or something like that with a wig when you're seeing some stunts and stuff like that. And I think also with the cost of uh, CGI, still being as expensive as it is and it still to me doesn't always substitute for the real thing you know for a, a real uh, genuine shot the CGI sometimes you just see a little bit of things that don't look quite as real as what you're used to um, but they'll, they'll probably eventually get there but for now I think it may actually be the cheaper way to go although I'm sure they don't give the cost of these robots but I imagine with the development stuff like that you're talking tens of millions if not over a hundred million so anyway, if you get a chance, check out that article from Popular Science. So anyway, that's about it for this second week in July, and I will catch you on the fourth week of July.